told you how we're supposed to set this up. Okay, the one, uh, 1,000 is the left side of the equation. That's what all this is equal to. And remember we said when we were solving exponentials, our first goal was to see if we could write the left side so that it had the same base as the right side. Well, there's no way that we're going to be able to do that because the base of the left side is 1.015. We're not going to be able to do that. So what was our alternative? If we couldn't do that, what did we do to solve these equations? Equations, excuse me. We graph them, okay? We graph them. So um, <clears throat> it has it set up here to record what our settings were. So in Y1, we need to put the equation or the model or the formula, whatever you want to call it. That goes in Y1. The 1,000 goes in Y2, and it also has a place there for us to put min, max for the x's and the y's, because we're going to have to change our window in order to see this. So, uh, let's just start with putting these in our Y1. So we've got 214, parentheses, 1.015 to the x, you don't have to use the t. Y2 is 1,000. Now, let's think about what makes sense here. Our x, or our t, is representing years. So our x values probably shouldn't be negative, right? We don't need negative x values because um, x is representing number of years. So we don't need negatives. Now, I am going to put negative just so that I can see my y-axis on the graph. Now, let's think about our x maximum for a second. Um, what was our answer to part E? How much money would we have after 100 years? How much money was that? 940-some? Okay. Well, we want to know how long we're going to have to wait to have $1,000. So, what do we know that our answer is at least as big as? It's at least 100 because we've got to earn more money than that. We weren't even at $1,000 at 100 years. So our X maximum, I'm going to start with something like 150 because I don't think it should be too much more than that. But we can always adjust that if we need to. Now, the Y minimum and Y maximum, Y is representing our amount of money. So again, uh, zero doesn't make sense, or anything less than zero. Any negative numbers don't make sense. We're not going to have negative money. Really, for our minimum, we start with 214, so really our minimum could be like 200, just a little bit less than what we start with. And our maximum, well, we're trying to get 1,000, so we needed to get a little bit more than that just so that we can see 1,000, so I'm going to do like 1,010, okay? So I'm going to go to, before I even graph it, I'm going to go straight to my window and I'm going to plug in these values. Negative 1, 150. I'm not going to mess with the S, uh, SCL. That's referring to the scale. That's how frequently your calculator puts a tick mark. That really doesn't matter. Okay. My Y minimum is 200. My Y maximum is 1,010. And I'm going to graph them. So here's my exponential model. It's modeling how much money I have. Here's the 1,000. What am I looking for? The intersection, right? So second trace, intersect, enter, enter, enter. And there's my intersection. Okay, it takes 103.554 years. Well, um, we'll go ahead and say that's 100. Halfway through that 103rd year, then we will have a thousand dollars. Five years. Okay. So we really didn't take that much more than 100 years. Just took three and a half more to get up to a thousand dollars. So that's how we would solve that. 